and uh, white. Uh, and I'm toning it down with a little of this, um, uh, I forget what color green this is. Uh, it's a light green, emerald green. Let's see, it tones it right down. And you can move this paint around a little while, uh, but not too long. And add a little more lavender around the eyes. Now these are just base coats. Just to get it started, it's going to be real ugly for a while. Extenders, yeah. In yeah. fact, I have some here, but I think it's kind of old. I'm a little leery of using it, but if I need to use it for this demo, I, I will. Now, oh, you got a nice nose. All right. Let's see what I can do with that. A little lighter here. See, very ugly. Not, not patty, <laughs> the painting to start off with. That, that's pretty bad. But uh, you have to, when you're at this stage, you have to realize it's going to get better. You just have to work at it. You know, portrait artists take weeks and weeks to do a portrait. And uh, they have to go through a lot of ugly stages. But I'm just doing this real fast because i got to get it done in half hour. So <laughs> this is going to be quite a trick. But it's, of course, it's not going to be done. You know, it'll... You'll, you'll see some progress, but not a whole lot. Now, under here, um, richer color. See the reds here? And I will tweak the shape of this eventually, but right now I want to get some color in there. And I'm going to take a, a bit of a darker green under here. See that? Oh, look at that rich, rich shadow. It's probably too much shadow for the porcelain look of her face right now, but it, it just makes me excited to see that I've mixed the green and the red and gotten a, such a rich color here. It's beautiful. I'll add a little more light over here. But it's so much better than it, adding a brown. If you take a brown like this and add white to it, this one right here, you get pink. And then you have so many layers to put on to get rid of that, and it gets muddy, and it's not pretty. So I like that color so much that I think I'm going to put part of her face in shadow uh, with that color. And let's see what I can accomplish here. Um, like I said, going to be ugly for a while. So stick around. It'll get better. Now, I'm, I really don't have much shape to her face yet. And uh, of course, her, her mouth is just a gaping hole of green. So that doesn't look too good yet. <laughs> but at, at some point soon, I'm going to have to do her eyes because um, I, I have to see the eyes. I, uh, that's just part of the way I paint. I want, my, I want my subject to look back at me so that I can feel that I'm breathing a little life into her. And it's what it feels like. It feels like you're, you know, you're creating something from nothing, from some liquid and some bristles and, uh, you know, canvas cloth. So it's, it's really a very creative process. Any questions out there? Oh, geez, you asked me that. I was afraid you would. Um, hmm. It's got so much paint on it, I really don't know. <laughs> Ten. Ten round. Ten round. Yeah. Um, one thing about brushes and acrylic, mm, they don't last good. I mean, unless you really wash them good. I, I don't know how Dawn keeps her brushes so nice. I just can't do it. Uh, my brushes got wrecked doing the um, mural. but. I have brushes for uh, a brush holder for all the different mediums. This has been a godsend 
This is an ice cube tray. You can get them online. Just look for a tubular ice cube tray. And I have my rounds here, my flats here, my weird ones in the middle. And it goes from uh, small to big. And uh, it's, not, it, it, it's almost a perfect solution because it keeps them all separate. You don't want them in there when they're dirty. I use something like this to hold my dirty brushes uh, when I'm doing oils. For, for, for um, watercolor and acrylic, you know, I, I just leave them in the water. But this is a wonderful thing to have, and I'm, uh, I've got four or five of them now. So when I'm out, uh, going out the door, if I want to do acrylics, they're all here. Uh, if I want to do oil, they're all there, or watercolor. And I also have one batch of these for crummy brushes that I just can't stand to throw away. They might be good for scumbling, though I've seen s some people cut the tips of them and shape them in such a way where they're, they're usable for something else. So. Now, you're doing the acrylics on the watercolor paper? No, this is, this is actually canvas. Oh, but this is canvas canvases. roll. I didn't want to you know, go out and get a huge canvas. Okay. But, you know, the, the, I, I'm giving the models all these paintings, but I don't know if everybody wants a big painting of themselves in their living room, but maybe <laughs> put a nice frame on it. But you know, they're already gessoed. Yeah. But uh, some of you might want to do, if it's too bold for, uh, you know, for a room, you can take a section of it and make it interesting, like elongated or, you know, something like that. Like even with Noah, I thought if, if this is too big to be framed, they could crop it here and there and just make a, a small thing with a little um, mat around it. But these, um, for the sake of um, having the audience see it from far away, I, I have to do it big. But you can see it's starting to get a little, uh, a little life, little shadows here and there. I'm going to do a little more lavender under here. And um, you can work, you know, while it, while it's still drying. They don't recommend you do that, but I, I did that all the while with that, that uh, Asian girl over there. But I think we got a, a start. Um, I need to square off her chin a little bit more. Right here. I can see that. Right here. And it's good to stand back a little bit with the portraits. It's good for us, too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, you can see better. Whoops. See, I ended up with white and that red and got pink. I want to keep that. Um, she comes out a little bit there. See, I could, uh, if I come out a little too far, I can correct that by redoing the background. Okay, I need a little, a little more orange in there. Now I'll cool that down a little later. Maybe a little more green in there right now. Cool it down right now. See, this is a light green, so it's, it not only cools it down, it lightens it up a little bit. Okay. See, now that shape of her face is going to have to be redone after I get the um, shapes blocked in. Right now I'm blocking in the shapes a little more. Now these uh, colors are all over the place and but they'll be um, they'll be glazed over and layered over so there's a, that's a good start. Got it here. Get this baby done here. And um, a lot of the artists that I admire seem to use just 
like bright red on the tip of the ear and for some reason it, it looks good. So uh, if I see something that I really like in a painting, I commit it to memory and I um, do it myself. And as you can see, I love orange. Even when I'm doing a landscape, it's got to have orange in it. I, I hit it with orange here and there, wherever I can, wherever I have an excuse. It's just a great color against the green. It uh, seems to jump right out at you. And some people even um, tone their canvases in orange. And it works out great. I was at a, on a painting trip once with Charles Groupe. Um, and there was an artist there, and she, um, she had the most beautiful oranges in her painting. She had a, she had a beautiful um, umbrella, and it was almost like it was outlined in orange. And I, I looked at her work, and I said, oh, God, I've got to learn how to do that. I've got to do that. And the next time I saw it, she'd painted over it. I said, I, I went over and I said, what did you do? You had a beautiful painting there. Oh, that's just my underpainting. I paint all over that. And it was so stunning before she painted over it. And what she painted over it was mud. So, you know, sometimes you have to learn when to stop. Now I'm toning this down here because it's just jumping out at me here. All right, now I'm going to take, uh, put this in the water. The water's getting dirty already. And uh, let's see, this is always a mystery. What brush to pick out? I don't know. Well, I'll try this one. I never seem to like the brushes I have with me. But uh, anyways, that's another story. Um, let's get some shadow. I think I'm going to mix the red and the green this time and see if I can't get a nice... Nice color for the shadows on her cheeks. Getting a little muddy color here, so I'm, I have to work at it a little bit. Keep wanting to smile. <laughs> Let me do your smile. <laughs> See, another, another way to transfer your image is to look at the angle of the cheek, the cheek line, and just transfer that right onto your paper. Now I'm going to use a little dark green just so I can get um, get a good line. I'll worry about that color later. Okay. Right now I'm just blocking things in, trying to get a sense of the shape of her face. And um, let's see. Okay, now I'm just going to get the little bit of the shape of her lips with a bright red. Even though she doesn't really have this brighter red on, I just got to have an underpainting just to get the shape of her smile. Now many times the um, the dip in the lip or where the divot is is a little off sometimes for, from where the middle of the nose is but yours is pretty spot on. Yours is very uh, 
symmetrical, as they say. Mm -hmm. Oh, you make me want to smile. I can't get the smile <laughs> off my face. <laughs> and this right now is just a matter of painting shapes, trying to be observant um, with the shape of her mouth. And this is, um, you know, just the beginnings, of course. Um, and, and the teeth, well, this is the only model so far with a, with a smile. So the teeth are always a challenge, but you don't want to paint every individual tooth or look like chiclets. <laughs> so you have to suggest the spacing in the teeth. Uh, even though you, I can see them perfectly clear here, there are separations, it never looks right when, they, when people paint every single tooth. And I'm going to just get rid of those green teeth here. And uh, just get a, a suggestion of her teeth. And she's got a beautiful set, too, of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you see how bad we are on Tuesdays. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> OK. Now, this is always a mystery. What color to use with the white? Purple, maybe? I don't know. I'll put a little brown, too, and see if that... Well, you're going to have purple teeth for now. <laughs> and they will be toned down. Now, what you do have to get correct is the shadow that goes from the end of the mouth to where the teeth begin. Now, that could be her teeth, the shadow, the, her teeth cock in that way, which is a normal way teeth do. They're not straight up and down when you're uh, going just beyond the canines. Now you can't really see her gum line, but you can see um, a little bit of the, a tiny little bit of uh, where the gum separates on the teeth. And, and that's okay to do as long as you don't do a bright pink, just something very subtle, very subtle. Um, I'm going to put a little, little darkness right over here. And um, I don't usually use black. Um, in the face at all. I'm putting a little dark blue there. I think it's Prussian. I hope that's Prussian I have on my... But see, there's the start of her teeth. And you put a little Prussian underneath the teeth to show that there was a little space, tiny little space. And uh, I won't get too much in detail over the teeth, but I just want to see if I can't uh, simulate the, the top of the, um, the tops of the teeth. And I'm going to use a, a, a Indian red with a tiny little bit of orange and a little white and see what that does. Just a tiny little bit. Now, this is just the first go around with the teeth and there'll probably be a, yeah, this is not the right color, I can tell right now. I'll have to go just a little darker. And maybe a little greener. A little more green on that. And uh, let's see, we need a little more of 
little more definition. I'm trying not to make them look like chiclets, <coughs> but they do need a little definition. And this, um, I think it's going to have to be a little shadow on the sides of each of the teeth. And the teeth are a little bit too white, I think. Tone them down a little bit. And another way to do it is to um, paint the teeth a little darker and then just reduce with white, which is basically what I'm doing now, doing a little reduction. Now these teeth look very white because their skin is dark right now. And, and the acrylic dries a little dark. Um, so this will need a lot more layers. And right now I'm going to push it on through and at least get the eyes so that they're looking at me. Because I need the eyes to look at me. But the mouth has to be a little bit farther done. A little pinkier. Now this has already dried a lot darker than what I put on it. Excuse me, I'm starting to drool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're cut off. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I'm going to just put a little more highlight on here. Sometimes you just need a tiny little bit of highlight and it makes a, it starts to come to life. Okay, now this, um, this whole section here that has to be all reshaped. Well, I want to get her eyes right now. And Maybe we can get her a drool cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Got to keep her smiling. No mercy. There's no mercy. No, there's no mercy here. Okay, now I think I've got this eye over a little too far. Yeah, I'm gonna move that over here. Yeah, that's about where I think it should be. Now a little mascara. on your nose. <laughs> okay. Now, 
a little more white on your um, on your eyeball just to get it started. So now you're holding your eyes. Really. <laughs> Have you changed your position? Just want to get a little bit of this. See, now this is the real ugly stage, but it's got a lot of potential, I could tell. Now this is where you start refining, <laughs> refining shapes. Now you can't really blend yet, not that time yet. But see all this darkness now, it's got to come to life. Now I'm looking at the, the light center. When I start a portrait, I always look at where, where are the lightest lights and where are the darkest darks. And uh, on Patty, she has very dark eyelashes on, which, uh, you know, probably the mascara. Mm -hmm. And um, the corners of her, of her mouth are black. Uh, it's not as black under her nose because you can't see the nostril that well. Um, but basically her eyes and the corners of her mouth. So um, that's what I have to concentrate on. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to get involved in a lot of mixing a lot of colors. I'm just going to lay on where I think the lights are and, and get her started. Get, get her started to come to life. When you add water to this, um, it behaves differently. Uh, the acrylic. I'm, I, I don't like to add water unless I really need to move it around because it, it just changes everything. And I think I need a bigger brush like this where I can really move the paint around. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is a nice scumbling brush. Now I can get some highlights in her. Just have to keep picking up a lot of paint and moving it around, and um, it, it'll start coming to life. But you can see that I'm I'm getting a lot more um, contrast here now. See, there's a lot of light right here, and pretty soon. I'm going to jump over to her hair and um, at least block that in. She's looking like Doris Day. <laughs> <laughs> Though I don't know what she looks like now. She's probably pretty old. <laughs> yeah. She's still alive. But well, see, when you put a little of this light green, Ooh, it gives it that old worldish look, you know, with the, the way the masters use green. Love that. I'm going to get a little more shadow on, on the bottom of her before I go too far. I just want to get a shape below this chin a little bit. Now this is not the best brush, but I, I want to be able to um, do this big enough so you all can see. But 
this actually is not a bad start. I'm not unhappy with it. But this is probably, it'll probably need another five or six hours before it really starts looking good. <laughs> 